Hi guys, it's Reagan and welcome back to another video. Today's video is so, so special and exciting because it's always one of my personal favorite videos to watch, not necessarily to film, but the work is always worth it. That's right, today I'm gonna be doing an in-depth library room and bookshelf tour. I'm so excited to do an updated bookshelf tour. I worked really hard to not only clean everything, I reorganized. I also dealt with all of my floor stacks ahead of this video, which I feel like deserves a bit of a pat on the back. But without further ado, because this is going to be a long video, let's go ahead and dive right in. Starting off, let's do a bit of an overview of the library room itself. And this video is actually sponsored by Klarna, which is an all-in-one shopping service, which helps save shoppers time, money, worry along every step of the shopping journey, which is perfect because I'm actually specifically partnering with them to celebrate their Buy It For Life initiative during Earth Month and also showcasing their incredible app. First and foremost, before I dive into all of the details, the obvious and most sustainable way to shop is always utilizing what you have and also never shopping outside of your budget. This is key. Buy It For Life is actually a list of consumers' most durable items for 2023, curated from the Buy It For Life subreddit community. And through this initiative, Klarna wants to inspire us to buy more long lasting items. I feel like the spirit of this perfectly matches this space because when I moved into this house, I wanted to be super selective on the items I put in here. Not only did I want them to be high quality so they would last me a long time, but I wanted to select things that I truly loved and would not get sick of. Specifically, I really agonized over the bookshelves I wanted to buy. I had a specific set of bookshelves for a really long time, but I finally decided to get the ladder bookshelves from CB2. I love them especially because they're really, really tall. So it allows me to have storage almost up to my ceilings, but they're also really easy to like mush together as you can see behind me. I feel like it's a great way to add a lot of storage in my space. The other thing I was really specific on was actually the couch that I film and read on. I wanted it to be comfortable, but cute. And this couch itself actually really makes me feel like I'm in a period movie. Like I'm some sort of lead in a drama and it brings me joy every single day. Klarna makes curating your space so much easier with their incredible app. With it, you can save time, money and energy by being able to save anything from books you might be interested to adding to your bookshelf, either a special edition or used books from your favorite indie bookstore, to discovering your next forever piece to decorate your room or bookshelves with. Being able to easily compare items between shops via Klarna really helps with mindful spending, not to mention they will alert you of any deals so you'll be sure to save money, which is great. Via the app as well, they also have a variety of collections you can also scroll through as well. Specifically, I'm very obsessed with their new Conscious Brand collection, which they made in in partnership with Good On You. You can of course access now during Earth Week, but of course after too. If you're not familiar, Good On You is the world's leading sustainability rating platform for fashion brands, which of course can help you make much more informed decisions, which is fantastic. If y'all are interested in downloading the app, I will of course have a link down below for you to learn more. But now that we've done an overview of the room itself, let's go ahead and dive right into the specific titles. Again, grab a drink, grab a snack. We're going to be here for a while. Hi. So basically to start off, let's do a bit of an overview of the bookshelves themselves. So I have four of these CB2 ladder bookshelves in this room and they're sort of mostly organized by genre. And then from there, it's just vibes. I like to kind of organize things in a way that's both space efficient, but also aesthetically, like visually how I like. Um, I do group my series together. It's not alphabetical in any way, shape or form, but my main two bookshelves, as you see here, are my primarily like fantasy and sci-fi shelves, uh, predominantly like adult fantasy and sci-fi with obviously some non-related genres mixed in there because you know, I do like to keep it chaotic. And then across the way here, right when you walk into my house, we have this bookshelf, which is mostly fiction. Um, so literary fiction, horror, mystery, contemporary romance, also a bit of nonfiction mixed in here. It's kind of like my catch-all non-fantasy shelf, if you will. And then this shelf, which is the fourth ladder bookshelf I have in this room, is full of all of my YA and middle grade, predominantly fantasy, because that's again what I read, but basically any YA or any middle grade is on this shelf here. But now let's begin the in-depth view of this room. I wanted to show off the room before I absolutely tore it apart because I do have to push around all of the furniture in here to be able to show off like 
their shelves in their entirety. So we're now going to move the couch. Let's get started. <laughs> LOL. The couch is gone. So let's do a bit of a pan overview here. You can also see my very hidden double stacking, which wasn't quite exposed to the world, but see my shame. I do have quite a few double stack shelves on my bookshelves. What can you do? I'm truly obsessed with these because the shelves go basically all the way to the ceiling, which is just amazing. I really just feel like it maximizes my storage space and yes, again, double stacked. I apologize for the strange angle. We're just really high and this is the best I can do, but let's get started. The so first up, I have The Girl in the Tower by Katherine Arden. I have an extra copy of this. I love this series though, so I kept my extra copy, despite my own rules. Once Upon a Burning Throne, Empire of Exiles, Age of Ash, The Shadow of What Was Lost, Theft of Swords, The Grace of Kings, Best Served Cold, The Unbroken, The Adventures of Amina al Sarafi. Then I have the Bone Season series, starting of course with The Bone Season, The Mime Order, The Mask Falling. And then next door I have Priory of the Orange Street and Day of Fallen Night, of course, all by Samantha Shannon. And then lastly for this top shelf, I have our share of night. Alrighty, moving on to shelf two. This is all sci-fi. First up, we have Vagabond, Project Hail Mary, The Water Knife, The Wind Up Girl, A Memory Called Empire, and its sequel, A Desolation Called Peace. Then we have The Expanse series by James S. A. Corey, the first one being Leviathan Wakes, Caliban's War, Abaddon's Gate, Cybola Burn, Nemesis Games, Babylon's Ashes, Persepolis Rising, and lastly, Tiamat's Wrath. And I have Dune by Frank Herbert, The Dispossessed by Ursula Le Guin, Hole by Hugh Howley, and lastly for this shelf, Nomen by Nick Harkaway. Moving on to one of my favorite shelves, which houses some of my all-time favorite series. The first one being the City of Brass series by S.A. Chakraborty, starting off with the City of Brass, Kingdom of Copper, and lastly, the Empire of Gold. Then I have the Greenbone Saga by Fonda Lee, the first one being Jade City, Book 2, Jade War, and lastly, Jade Legacy. Then I have my N.K. Jemisin book, starting with the Inheritance Trilogy by N.K. Jemisin. This is a bind-up. Of course, I also have the Broken Earth Trilogy, my favorite, the fifth season being the first one. Book 2 is Obelisk Gate, and lastly, The Stone Sky. Then I have also The City We became and I do have book two. It is somewhere in my house. Um, this is a duology. Next up, I have Black Sun and Fevered Star by Rebecca Roanhorse. We have Babel by Arv Kwong. And lastly for this shelf, I have the Foundry Side trilogy by Robert Jackson Bennett, the first one being Foundry Side. Next is Shorefall, which is book two. And lastly, Lock Lens for book three. Moving on to shelf four. This is more of like dreamy, lyrical, fantasy literary fiction leaning stories, so I like to group those together. The first book is Electra by Jennifer Saint, The Witch's Heart by Genevieve Gornacek, Gollum and the Genie, and The Hidden Palace by Helene Wecker, Sister Song by Lucy Holland, Aradine also by Jennifer Saint, Thousand Ships by Natalie Haynes, Dreamer's Pool by Juliette Marillier, Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern, The Sisters of Winterwood by Raina Rossner, Once Upon a River by Diane Setterfield, Clockmaker's Daughter by Kate Morton, and lastly for this long stack, we have The City of Dreaming Books by Walter Morez. Now moving on to this paperback stack, we have Piranesi by Susanna Clark, Never Let Me Go by Kazu Ishiguro, Rebel of the Sower by Octavia E. Butler, Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern, Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman, The of Thieves by David Benoff, The Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry, The Serpent of Venice by Christopher Moore, The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon, and lastly for that paperback stack, we have Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell. And then lastly on this shelf, we have The Stardust Thief by Chelsea Abdullah. Moving on, we're at a shelf that is directly behind me and houses a lot of my favorites. This is my Brandon Sanderson shelf, but the first book on this bookshelf is Uprooted by Naomi Novik, as well as Spinning Silver by the same author. Then we have The Final Empire, The Well of Ascension, The Hero of Ages, Alloy of Law, Shadow of Self, and Bands of Mourning. These are all Miss Bourne novels. Then I have Warbreaker and Elantris, which are both standalones. Next is The Stormlight Archive, starting off with The Way of King, Words of Radiance, Oathbringer, and lastly, Rhythm of War. Get my newest edition, which is Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson in my beautiful leather bound edition. And then lastly, I have the Bear and the Nightingale trilogy, one of my all-time favorite series, starting off with the Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. Next is The Girl in the Tower. And lastly, The Winter of the Witch. Alrighty, another shelf full of series. First, we have The Wheel of Time by Robert Jordan, starting off with The Eye of the World. Then it's The Great Hunt, Dragon Reborn, Shadow Rising. And then we skip a bit to A Crown of Swords. I don't own all the books. A Path of Daggers. And lastly, Winter's Heart. Then I have the First Law trilogy by Joe Abercrombie, the 
the first one being the blade itself. Then it's before they are hanged. Lastly, the last argument of kings. And we have the Bloodsworn by John Gwen, the first one being the Shadow of the Gods and the Hunger of the Gods. And because I wanted them to be next to each other, Malice. And lastly, I have the Seven Waters series by Juliet Morellier, the first one being the Daughter of the Forest, Son of the Shadows. And then lastly, for the ones that I own, Child of the Prophecy. Alrighty, and then the last shelf of Bookshelf 1 is by far my messiest, so let's just go ahead and dive right into this double stacked disaster. First, we have A Secret History of Witches by Louisa Morgan, The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab, The Pursuit of William Abbey by Claire North, The Space Between Worlds by Micaiah Johnson, A History of Wild Places by Shay Earnshaw, Descendant of the Crane by Joan He, Outlander by Diana Gabaldon, Declaration of the Rights of Magicians by H.G. Perry, The Jasmine Throne by Tasha Suri, How to Be Eaten by Maria Alderman, Thistlefoot by Jenna Rose Nethercott, Trail of Lightning by Rebecca Roanhorse, Ordinary Monsters by J.M. Miro, Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry, A Discovery of Witches, Shadow of the Night, and The Book of Life all by Deborah Harkness. Lastly, for Row One, The Last Tale of the Flower Bride by Roshni Chakshi. Then we have a very clear shelf, mostly S.J. Maz, the first one being The Assassin's Blade, then Throne of Glass, Crown of Midnight, Heir of Fire, Queen of Shadows, Empire of Storms, Kingdom of Ash, Tower of Dawn, A Court of Thorns and Roses, A Court of Mist and Fury, A Court of Wings and Ruin, Crescent City, and lastly, House of Breath and Sky, all by Sarah J. Maas. And then lastly, I have Written in Red, Murder of Crows, and Vision in Silver, all by Anne Bishop. Back at the top now with shelf number two, starting off with A River Enchanted and A Fire Endless by Rebecca Ross. Then we have Light from Uncommon Stars by Reka Aoki, Iron Queen by Nevo, The Grief of Stones by Catherine Addison, and The Witness for the Dead also by Catherine Addison, Liar's Knot by M.A. Carrick. Then we have the Lightbringer series by Brent Week, starting off with The Black Prism. Then is The Blinding Knife. Then we have The Broken Eye, Blood Mirror, and The Burning White. Then I have Rosewater by Tad Thompson, Unkindness of Magicians by, by Kat Howard, also Far from the Light of Heaven by Tad Thompson, My Best Friend's Exorcism, and The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying a Vampire by Grady Hendrick, Middle Game by Sean and McGuire, and lastly, The Assassin's Quest by Robin Hobb, the illustrated edition. Next is a rather newly minted shelf. I did some rearranging and I'm very proud of this one. So let's just go ahead and dive in. I have The Trouble with Peace by Joe Abercrombie, which is book two. I don't own book one. I got this at a used bookstore. Then I also have The Three Body Problem and The Dark Forest by Xian Liu. Then we have this paperback stack, first being The Wake of Vultures. Then we have The Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula Le Guin. Then Ancillary Justice and Ancillary Sword by Anne Leakey. The First Sister by Lyndon A. Lewis. The Martian by Andy Weir. Over the Woodward Wall by A. Deborah Baker. Then we have The King Fountain series by Jeff Wheeler, the first one being The Queen's Poisoner. Then we have The Thief's Daughter, The King's Traitor. And lastly, The Hollow Crown. Next up, we have the Masquerade series by Seth Dickinson, the first one being the traitor Baru Kamaran. Then we have the monster Baru Kamaran and the tyrant Baru Kamaran. Between Two Fires and the Black Tongue Thief, both by Christopher Bowman. Then we have the Tyrling series by Erica Johansson, the first one being the Queen of the Tyrling, the Invasion of the Tyrling, Fate of the Tyrling, and lastly, Beneath the Keep. And then to round out this shelf, I have a couple of book ones to some future fantasy series I want to read, the first being The Emperor's Blade by Brian Stanley. Stably. And lastly, Gardens of the Moon, first book of the Malazan Book of the Fallen by Steven Erickson. Another newer shelf in terms of rearranging, and I'm such a fan of it, so let's dive in. First, we have the Lies of Loch Lamora series by Scott Lynch, the first one being The Lies of Loch Lamora, Red Seas Under Red Skies, and The Republic of Thieves. These are like uh, dust jacket list versions of these that I got on the book depository. Then we have the Legends of the First Empire series by Michael J. Sullivan. I finally found a home for them on my shelf. The first one being Age of Myth, Age of Swords, Age of War, and the last book I have on hand, which is book four, Age of Legend. Then we have the Books of Babel series by Josiah Bancroft, the first one being Senlin Ascends, The Arm of the Sphinx, The Hod King, and lastly, The Fall of Babel. Then we have this paperback stack, the first one being The Goblin Emperor by Catherine Addison, 16 Ways to Defend a Walled City by K.J. Parker, The Sword of Kagan by M.L. Wing, American Gods by Neil Gaiman, The Raven Tower by Anne Leckie, Bone Ship by R.J. Barker, and then lastly, The City of Stairs series by Robert Jackson Bennett, the first one being The City of Stairs, City of Miracles, lastly, City of Blades. It is time. We've reached my favorite bookshelf out of all of my bookshelves, and that is my Robin Hobb shelf. 
it's divine, it's stunning. All of these additions or most of these editions are the UK versions of these books in paperback. Um, but I do have one illustrated edition here, which is from the US, and that is for The Assassin's Apprentice. And we're just gonna cruise through these because I also have another copy of The Assassin's Apprentice, Royal Assassin, and Assassin's Quest, which is the first trilogy. Then is Ship of Magic, The Mad Ship, and Ship of Destiny, which is the second trilogy, Fool's Errand, The Golden Fool, and Fool's Fate, the third trilogy. Then we're switching things up with a quartet. The first one being Dragon Keeper, Dragon Haven, City of Dragons, and lastly, Blood of Dragons. Then the final and most beautiful trilogy, Fool's Assassin, Fool's Quest, and the prettiest book of them all in the last book, Assassin's Fate. Alrighty, moving on to this shelf, which is an interesting combination of series and literary fiction. Starting off with this stack here, we have Good Omens by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman, Mrs. Death, Mrs. Death by Selena Godin, Bone Orchard by Sarah A. Mueller, A Winter's Promise, The Missing of Claire de Lune, Memory of Babel, and The Storm of Echoes, all by Christelle Davos. Next, we have The Justice of Kings, and The Tyranny of Faith by Richard Swan, Velvet Was the Night, and Gods of Jade and Shadow by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. Next is Circe by Madeline Miller, She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan, The Muse by Jesse Burton, The Bone Clocks by David Mitchell, The Queen of the Night by Alexander Chi, The Buried Giant by Kazu Ishiguro, The Mercies by Kieran Millwood Hargrave, Lara on the Sun, also by Kazu Ishiguro. And lastly, The Book of Form and Emptiness by Ruth Ozeki. Second to last shelf on bookshelf two. First we have... Master of Sorrows by Justin T. Call, The Bone Shard Daughter, and The Bone Shard Emperor by Andrea Stewart. Next, we have Vengeful by V.E. Schwab. I seem to have lost my copy of Vicious by V.E. Schwab. Then we have A Darker Shade of Magic, A Gathering of Shadows, and A Conjuring of Light, again, all by V.E. Schwab. Then I have The Poppy War, Dragon Republic, and The Burning God, which is the Poppy War trilogy by R.F. Kuang. Next is The Helm of Midnight, which is the first book to the Five Penalty series by Maria Lostetter, as well as its sequel, the Cage of Dark Hours. Next is The Name of the Wind and A Wise Man's Fear by Patrick Rothfuss. Then we have Gideon the Ninth, Haro the Ninth, lastly None of the Ninth. Alrighty, another double stack shelf. The first book here is A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik, Kayake by Vishnavi Patel, Light of the Jedi by Charo Soul, The Once and Future Witches by Alex E. Haro, The Atlas Six, and The Atlas Paradox by Olivier Blake, Daughter of Red Winter by Ed McDonald, Library of the Dead by T.L. Huchu, The Bronze Drum by Fiong Nguyen, The Quick by Lauren Owen, A Master of Jin by P. Jelly Clark, Magic Lessons by Alice Hoffman, oh, and The Book of Magic by Alice Hoffman, The Queen's Price by Anne Bishop, One Dark Window by Rachel Gillig, The Stolen Air by Holly Black, Spells for Forgetting by Adrian Young. And lastly, the last two books are out of order, but will make sense when we get to the second row. We have Fire Study and Magic Study by Maria V. Snyder. Moving on, we have Wicked Fox by Kat Cho and Vicious Spirits. Then we have The Cruel Prince, For some reason jumping to book three, which is The Queen of Nothing by Holly Black. Then we have a little Cassandra Clare moment, starting with Lady Midnight, Lord of Shadows, and Queen of Air and Darkness, all all part of the Dark Artifices series. Then we have Chain of Gold and Chain of Iron. And of course, Chain of Thorns, all part of the Last Hour series by Cassandra Clare. Then we have Half Sick of Shadows by Lauren Sebastian. The Knight of the Dragon by Julie Kagawa. And also Shadow of the Fox by Julie Kagawa, which is book one. Then we have Poison Study, Night Study, Dawn Study, and Shadow Study by Maria V. Snyder. Starting with shelf three, which is my first of two middle grade shelves. The first book we have is Nevermore and Wondersmith. And lastly, Hollow Pox, which is all by Jessica Townsend and is part of the Morgan Crow series. And we have Furthermore and Witchwood by Tahera Mafi. Then I have The Naming by Alison Crogan, The Race to the Sun by Rebecca Roanhorn, Arusha and the End of Time, and Arusha and the Song of Death by Roshni Chakshi, The Storm Runners by J.C. Cervantes, Dragon Pearl by Yoon Ha Lee. My other Tristan Strong books are in the other room, but I do have Tristan Strong Punches a Hole in the Sky by Kwame Mabalia. Then we have Amari and the Night Brothers and Amari and the Great Game by B.B. Alston. Howl's Moving Castle. I'm a liar. Look, we also have Tristan Strong Keeps Punching by Kwame Mabalia. It was just in the wrong spot. List by Patricia Ford. And then lastly, The Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland in a Ship of Her Own Making and The Girl Who Fell Beneath Fairyland by Catherine M. Valente. This shelf should have a clear and obvious theme, but let's just jump in. We have 
The Lost Hero, The Son of Neptune, Mark of Athena, The House of Hades, The Blood of Olympus, The Hidden Oracle, Trials of Apollo, Trials of Apollo, The Dark Prophecy, the Trials of Apollo, The Burning Maze, the Trials of Apollo, The Tyrant's Tomb, Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard, Ship of the Dead, Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard, Hammer of Thor, Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard, The Sword of Summer, Daughter of the Deep, and then my box set of the original five Percy Jackson books. Of course, all of these books have been by Rick Riordan. And then the last book on this shelf is actually the Mysterious Benedict Society by Trenton Lee Stewart. Moving on, we have our first YA shelf, starting off with Tempest and Slaughter by Tamora Pierce. Then we have the Thief series by Megan Wallen Turner, the first book being The Thief, Queen of Atolia, King of Atolia, Conspiracy of Kings, Thick as Thief. Lastly, Return of the Thief. Moving on, we have one of my all time favorite uh YA series which is the Three Dark Crown series by Kendar Blake. This is a novella, The Queens of Fenbrun. Then we have Three Dark Crowns, Two Dark Reigns, One Dark Throne, and Five Dark Fates by Kendar Blake. Next I have Little Thieves by Margaret Owen and of course Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. Moving on we have the Ember in the Ashes series by Salva Tahir, the first one being an Ember in the Ashes. Then we have A Torch Against the Night, Reaper at the Gates. Lastly A Sky Beyond the Storm. Then we have the Legend Born series by Tracy Dion, obviously Legendborn being book one. Next is Bloodmark. This is probably my favorite YA shelf just because it houses some of my all-time favorite series. First, I have my Cinda Williams Chima collection, which is a lot, so we'll just jump in. The first is the Warrior Air. Then we have the Wizard Air, Dragon Air, the Enchanter Air, and then the last of the Air series, we have the Sorcerer Air. Moving on to the Seven Realms series, we have the Demon King, the Exiled Queen, the Grey Wolf Throne, and the Crimson Crown. Then we have the Shattered Realms, the first one being Flamecaster, Shadowcaster, Stormcaster, and lastly, Deathcaster. And we have the Strange the Dreamer duology, the first one being Strange the Dreamer, and Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor. Another amazing duology, we also have Ray Bear by Jordan Afueco, and the sequel, Redemptor. Lastly, we have Cindy Williams Chima's newest book, which is Children of Ragnarok, which I'm going to reorganize a little bit and put this here, because that makes a lot more sense. Alrighty, moving on, we have Skyward, Starsight, and Cytonic by Brandon Sanderson, which is the Skyward sci-fi series. Then I have Scythe and Thunderhead by Neil Schusterman. I do have the third book, but it's currently on Clay's nightstand. Then we have The Knife of Never Letting Go, The Ask and the Answer, and Monsters of Men by Patrick Ness. Moving on to this stack, we have the Silence of Bones, Tween Shades of Grey by Ruta Sepetis, Salt to the Sea, also by Ruta Sepetis, The Strange and Beautiful Sorrows of Ava Lavender by Leslie Walton, More Than This by Patrick Ness, Lost Away by Darcy Little Badger, Burn by Patrick Ness, Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas, Lastly, The Ones We're Meant to Find by Joan He. Then we have A Kata Witch and A Kata Warrior by Nenendia Korofor. I have the third book, but it's in the other room. Then I have The Book of Dust and The Secret Commonwealth by Philip Pullman. Another shelf housing some of my all-time favorite YA series. First, we have The Lumetri Chronicles by Melina Marchetta. The first is Finnegan of the Rock, Froy of the Exile, and Quintana of Sharon. Then we have The Girl of Fire and Thorns series by Ray Carson, the first one being The Girl of Fire and Thorns, The Bitter Kingdom, and The Crown of Embers. Next, I have Walk on Earth a Stranger by by Ray Carson, Like a River Glorious, last book in this series, Into the Bright Unknown. Next, I have A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemner, book two, A Heart So Fierce and Broken, and lastly, A Vow So Bold and Deadly. Next, we have the Truly Devious series by Maureen Johnson. The first is Truly Devious, The Hand on the Wall. Lastly, The Vanishing Stair. Then I have The Way Back by Gabrielle Savitt, A Lesson in Vengeance by Victoria Lee, This Savage Song, and Our Dark Duet by Victoria Schwab. Bottom shelf of the YA shelf. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Jade Fire Gold by June C.L. Tan. How to Be Both by Ali Smith, which is not YA. And Neither is Folklore by Angela Mi Young Her. We have Dry by Neil Schusterman and Jared Schusterman. The Empire of Dreams by Ray Carson. The Kingdom of Back by Marie Lu. The Lifestyle by Taylor Hahn. Woman of Light by Kali Ferredo Anstein. Five Survive by Holly Jackson. Lost in the Neverwoods by Aidan Thomas. Under the Whispering Door by TJ Klune. Fountains of Silence by Ruta Sepetis. Codename Verity. And Rose Under Fire by Elizabeth Wine. Dance of Thieves. And Vow of Thieves by Mary E. Pearson. The Circus Train by Amita Parka. And lastly for the shelf, the 
Wilder Woman by Ruth Emmy Lang. Next up, I have the Keeper of the Lost City series by Shannon Messenger, the first one being Keeper of the Lost Cities. Then we have Exile, Everblaze, Never Seen, Lodestar, Nightfall, Flashback, Legacy, Stellar Loon. Next, we have The Graceling Realm by Kristen Cashore, the first one being Graceling, Fire, Air Blue, and Winter Keep. A Song of Wraith and Ruin by Roseanne A. Brown, Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim, and lastly, The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sun by Axie O. Alrighty, this is my romance shelf. It was just predominantly contemporary romance, but now I have some fantasy romance too. The first book I have here is Always and Forever by Laura Jean by Jenny Han, Love and Other Disasters by Anita Kelly, Beach Read by Emily Henry, Fortunes of Jaded Women, Lunar Love by Lauren Kong Jessen, People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry, Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston, The Unsinkable Greta James by Jennifer E. Smith, The Heart Principle by Helen Huang, Well Met by Jen DeLuca, Anna Kay by Jenny Lee, Better Together by Christine Riccio, also again but better by Christine Riccio, Arsenic and Adobo by Mia P. Bonanzala, Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett, Half a Soul, 10,000 Stitches, and Long Shadow by Olivia Atwater, the Very Secret Society of Regular Witches by Sangu Madonna, Take Me Home Tonight by Morgan Matson, Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang, Get a Life Chloe Brown, and Take a Hint Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert, Crazy Rich Asians, Find a Rich Girlfriend, and Rich People Problems by Kevin Kwan, and lastly, The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. My sorta mystery thriller shelf. First we have Long Bright River by Liz Moore, Seven and a Half Deaths of Evan Hardcastle by Stuart Turton, also The Devil and the Dark Water by the same author, and we have Ninth House and Hellbent by Lee Bardugo, How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix, Age of Vice by Deepti Kapoor, Night Film by Marisha Pessel, Things in Jars by Just Kid, The 22 Murders of Madison May by Max Berry, Once There Were Wolves by Charlotte McConaughey, The Sudden Appearance of Hope, and The First 15 Lives of Harry August by Claire North, The Measure by Nikki Elric, Where the World Ends by Geraldine McCallaran, Winter Counts by David Hesco, Wanbley Wyden, Killers of a Certain Age by Deanna Rayborn, The Unseen World by Liz Moore, I Have Some Questions for You by Rebecca Mackay, and lastly, Sign Here by Claudia Lux. My first predominantly, if not entirely, literary fiction shelf. Starting, of course, with this stack. First, we have Pachinko by Min Jin Lee, Interior Chinatown by Charles Yu, Honey by Mona Awad, Court Dancer by Kyung Suk Shin, Rules of Civility by Amor Taos, Let the Great World Spin by Colin McCann, Dipping the Velvet by Sarah Water, Bringing Up the Bodies by Hilary Mantle, Joy Luck Club by Amy Tan, Special Topics in Calamity Physics by Marisha Pessel, and lastly for that stack, The Sympathizer by Viet Then Nguyen. Next, we have A Burning by Megha Majumadar, Dutch House by Anne Patchett, Crossroads by Jonathan Franzen, Harlem Shuffle by Colson Whitehead, Outlawed by Anna North, The Office of Historical Corrections by Danielle Evans, The Mothers by Britt Bennett, The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett, the Candy House by Jennifer Egan, Lauren Groff, The Matrix, If I Had Your Face, Francis Chop, Beautiful World, Where Are You, and Normal People by Sally Rooney, Station Eleven, Glass Hotel, and Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel. And lastly for this shelf, Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng. Alrighty, moving on. Next we have The Marriage Portrait by Maggie O'Farrell, A Constellation of Vital Phenomena by Anthony Mara, A Dust Cover of All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Dorr because Clay is reading it, Real Rights by Hannah Kent, Deployment by Phil Clay, Goldfinch by Donna Tartt, Eleanor by Jason Gruley, The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak, also The Bridge of Clay by Marcus Zusak, Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin, Great Circle by Maggie Shipstead, Beasts of a Little Land by Juhei Kim, Narrow Road to the Deep North by Richard Flanagan, A Visit from the Goon Squad by Jennifer Egan, a Sentence by Louise Eldridge, There There by Tommy Orange, The Luminaries by Eleanor Canton, The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna, Lincoln Highway by Amor Tao, Four Winds by Kristen Hanna, and lastly for this shelf, The Book of Longings by Sue Monk Kit. Another lit fic heavy shelf. First we have my Brilliant Friend, The Story of a New Name, Those Who Leave and Those Who Stay, all by Elena Ferrante, Magician by Colm Tobin, Hell of a Book by Jason Mott, Valentine by Elizabeth Wetmore, Transcended Kingdom by Ya Ghazi, Gold Diggers by Sanjina Sathian, The Death of Vivek Oji, A Good Neighborhood, Black Cake by Charmaine Wilkerson, Shock of the Fall by Nathan Filer, Memorial by Brian Washington, Fiona and Jane by Ji Chen Ho, The Last Story of Mina Lee by Nancy Jo Young Kim, Ask Again Yes by Mary Beth Ke and Frederick Bachman's Anxious People. Then we have Daisy Jones and the Six, Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, and Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid, Olga Dies Dreaming by Chotal Gonzalez, Ithaca by Claire North, and lastly for this shelf, The Miniaturist by Jesse Burton. Some literary fiction, some fantasy-leaning literary fiction. Let's dive in. Exit West by Mohsin Hameen, Crane Husband by Kelly Barnhill, Library at Mount Char by Scott Hawkins, Stationery Shop by Amarjan Kamali, The Overstory by Richard Powers, Utopia Avenue by 
David Mitchell, Fates and Furies by Lauren Groff, Beautiful Ones by Sylvia Moreno Garcia, My Year Abroad by Chang Ra Lee, Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller, and lastly for that stack, Bear Town by Frederick Bachman. Then we have The Whalebone Theater by Joanna Quinn, A Tale for the Time Being by Ruth Ozeki, Pineapple Street by Jenny Jackson, Daughter of Dr. Moreau by Sylvia Moreno Garcia, Each Blossom Spring by Melissa Fu, The Family by Naomi Krupitsky, The Hacienda by Isabel Canas, The Inheritance of Arcadia de Vigna by Zoradia Cordova, The Ghost Bride by Yang Shi Chu, Our Missing Hearts by Celeste Ng, Other Birds by Sarah Addison Allen, Library of Legends by Janie Chang, When Women Were Dragons by Kelly Barnhill, Deathless by Catherine M. Valente, In We Were Birds by Ayana Lloyd Banwo, and lastly, The Smell of Other People's Houses by Bonnie Sue Hitchcock. We've made it to the very last shelf of this bookshelf tour. Probably the most assorted mix of genres. We're kind of all over the place in terms of these books. This was supposed to just be a nonfiction shelf, but I've clearly added some other things, so let's just dive right in. First, we have The Splendid and the Vile by Eric Larson, Homanoffs by Simon Sibag Bontefiore, uh, John Green's The Anthropocene Reviewed, Upheaval by Jared Diamond, Cast by Isabel Wilkerson, Red Notice by Bill Browder, The Devil and the White City by Eric Larson, Dying in H Mark by Michelle Zauner, The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner, The Huntress by Kate Quinn, Elizabeth is Missing by Emma Healy, I Am the Messenger by Marcus Zusak, Anna Dressed in Blood by Kendar Blake, I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy, the Kingdoms by Natasha Poli, I Don't Know How This Ended Up Here but The Wicked King by Holly Black, and lastly, Small Angels by Lauren Owen. Alrighty guys, that is my entire library room bookshelf tour. I hope you enjoyed. Again, big shout out to this video sponsor, which is Klarna, and I will see you guys soon with another video soon. Goodbye!